All right, so we're going to start this video out with a little plant unboxing from Aquarium Co-op. Pretty excited about it. Uh, then we're going to take a look at the tank that it's going in, do a little maintenance, a little scaping, hopefully have a little bit of fun. Uh, but so these have been sitting in this box because I specifically wanted to film an unboxing and then uh, we lost power for the last three days. So these have been sitting in this box for quite a while now. Uh, like all this extra packing paper, I could reuse that for uh, when I ship. But let's take a look. Holy smokes. Every single one is individually bagged. Oh my gosh. This is going to take a while. There's only three different types of plants here. So we'll take a look at a couple of them and... If you're curious, they come labeled. This is Dwarf Baby Tears, and uh, they come in that plastic bag and then another little fabric mesh type bag here, which, you know, I kind of wonder if it's going to be reused as like a media bag or something. Hmm, I'm going to have to save these, I think. Do a little experimenting. Uh, here's Baby Tears number one. We don't need that. Looking pretty, uh, pretty full. All right, pretty happy about that. Now these are gonna be going in a tank uh, with CO2. All right, so we will just skip past all these other dwarf baby tears. Uh, here's a plant that I really enjoy. Now, this looks almost identical, but I assure you it is not. So this one is pearlweed. Can you tell the difference? Pearlweed. Baby tears. Come on. There we go. So it might be hard to tell, but I can kind of tell. So the stems are a little bit longer on here. Well, not the stems, but as far as how spread out the leaves are, this is more compact. This is a little bit more stringy. That's kind of how you tell the difference. But uh, luckily, they come labeled, so I uh, don't really have to worry about mixing them up. One more pearl weed. Here we go. Just This one's a little taller, too, it looks like. Oops, I'll move right over here. All right. So the roots are still moist, so that's okay. Nice and nice and wet here. Uh, but the uh, stems are, are honestly a little dried out. Uh, they've been sitting in this box for a while, so need to get these in water right away. So I only got three types of plants here. So we've got the dwarf baby tears, the pearl weed, and the last one is going to be a mania gracilis. Armania gracilis. I have no idea how to pronounce it, but that's what I'm going to go with. Armani. It's Armani. This is a really nice stem plant and uh, gets really colorful. Doesn't really look like much now, but you know, still pretty, uh, pretty red on there. I'm hoping to turn this, come on, I'm hoping to turn this more orange uh, with the CO2 and highlight. So we'll see how that goes. Like I said, these have been in the box for a while. So those are the three types I got. I'm going to head on over to the fish room, put them in a tank, and uh, show you what I got going on. So here's the tank we're working with. As you can see, it's a 20 gallon long, and uh, we already have aqua soil in there, which I'm not the biggest fan of for the price. I think there's better options, uh, but it's already in there, so we're going to use that. Uh, you can also hopefully tell that there is a lot of algae in here, so adding CO2 should help with that, as well as adding all these new plants to take up a bunch of the extra nutrients. As far as inhabitants, there's only five, and it's three bar cheek gobies and two aspidoras. So this is the middle tank. There's three 20 gallon longs on this rack. And we're gonna be scaping and hooking up all three. One of them is already, uh, well, not much of a scape, but it is planted already. So we've got one done. This one we're working on next and then we'll get uh, to the top one uh, last. Now, as you can see, I'm just plopping them in here in the pots, not taking them out yet. And the reason is, is I like to acclimate my plants before I buy them. So you can see there's some Rotala up here floating. Uh, this Anubius I'm probably gonna take out, but I just like to give them a couple days to get adjusted to the new water. So I'm going to finish unpacking all these, let them float just like this for a couple days and then we will come back in for the scape. Uh, I plan on using a thousand layer stone which um, not a lot of people use so that should be pretty interesting and maybe you've seen it maybe you haven't and obviously need to clean up that glass a little bit before I film again 
So I say check back in in a couple days, but it's gonna be instant for you guys. I don't know why I always say that. Like, we'll uh, we'll check back in in a couple days, and it's always instant for for y'all. So, oh well. Anyways, I'll see y'all in a couple days. First off, I gotta address the noise, the heater whine, the air pump. Uh, I apologize. I cannot turn off the heater. It takes too long to reheat this room if I do. Um, but I'll have that problem fixed in the future with a new heater that's a lot quieter. All right, so as you can see, I have done a little bit since the last check-in. Uh, just, just quickly put some rocks in there and uh, planted a few of the plants. I decided against using the our Mani Gracilis in here. Uh, since I already have the Rotala, uh, I'll save the, the Armani for the next one we do here. Oh, I just totally ruined this whole pot. Oh, concentrate, man. Come on, get your game face on, Bob. I'm burying these really deep uh, because as you'll notice, the only fish in here are bottom dwellers. So they're definitely going to dig these up. So most of it is gonna be going into the substrate, which is fine. Once I get CO2 hooked up, which I'm not gonna do right now, uh, but once I get CO2 hooked up, these things are gonna grow and spread like crazy. I'm not even splitting these up. I'm just taking them apart in the middle, taking them out. Uh, if you see these things here, don't worry. These are not eggs. They're not, I don't even know if that's coming in on camera, these little things. That's actually Osmocote, well, generic Osmocote. So if you do leave your plants floating in your tank, uh, just be a little cautious because Osmocote does leach ammonia. Something to look out for there. I do have another carpeting plant that, uh, that I'll show you here in just a second. I actually forgot the name of it, but as you can see, it's pretty easy to just split it open in the middle. And then carefully, they're very delicate plants. Very carefully, don't manhandle it like I did the one two pots ago. So I just take the main clump here, ball it all up like this. I don't remove all the rock wool, but I get a lot of it. And uh, maybe we'll put this one right here again. Most of it is going under there because sure, it would look better if a lot of the leaves were out of the substrate, but it is also going to be annoying having to replant these things five times a day until they take root from these gobies. The uh, Barchi gobies are super active. They've already started to dig a cave under this rock here. The reason I went with these rocks is because they do like to perch on rocks. Now you may notice that there's no uh, wood in here and I don't know if I'm going to put wood in here or not. We'll have to see if I find something that I think will look good. I'll throw it in there. If not, I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, eventually the Aspidorus, where are they at? Uh, in here somewhere, will be coming out as soon as I get my Corridoras rack built. And then the Barchi Gobies will have this whole place to themselves, which is, oh, that was terrible. Which has been the plan from the start to give them their own tank so that they can breed in here. Oh my gosh, what is going on? All right, I'm just gonna bury the whole thing. No, nope, no I'm not. So I have one more plant I'm gonna put in here. Uh, the name escapes me, but it's this clump right here. I'll have the name pop up on screen. Uh, lighting is really dark in this corner. What if I not do anything? Not really. Yeah, a little, it looks a little bit better. But this I'm actually gonna put right in front of this rock here where he's already kind of dug in there. And then once it takes root and establishes itself, I will remove the middle portion of that so he can still get down in there. And then his little cave, you can see he's in this one right now. Uh, his little cave there will uh, be ready for him to use. And hopefully we get some spawning. So that's basically it. This is just, uh, again, your basic 20 long pearl weed, dwarf baby tears, and uh, whatever, whatever I said this plant was back uh, earlier when it popped up. And then an unknown species of Rotala that uh, unfortunately I lost the name of. This is gonna get so, it's already pretty pink, but it's gonna get really pink once the CO2 hits this tank. And uh, I only have a sponge filter going right now. Uh, I may throw in a small hang on back filter on the end over here. We'll see uh, if, if, if this is not enough water flow. Once this gets fully planted, then I'll have to add, add a hang on back. And uh, then I just have uh, a heater here set to 75, the co-op heater, which is 
I, I love this thing, I'm not gonna lie. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. So it may not look like much now, but I assure you this is going to grow like crazy. As we all know with aquariums, the, the, the key to be successful, in my opinion, the most important key is patience. So we just gotta wait, let it grow out, let it carpet, let it spread. Uh, and I'll be fertilizing this once a week. Once CO2 hits here, I'll probably be fertilizing twice a week with just Easy Green. Uh, that's basically all you need unless you want to go real crazy and do like EI dosing, but I don't think there's a need for that. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely subscribe if you're not, because uh, the next video we are going to be setting up CO2 in both of these tanks. Uh, the, the third tank up top here, not quite ready. As you can see, I've got just a bunch of random plants in here. I've got some random moss growing, a carpet of moss right here. Uh, some maiden hair fern, these are all house plants. Um, so philodendron, pasta, pastazana, something like that. Philodendron micans there. Uh, Prince of Orange over here. <laughs> a random matten filter just hanging out. Uh, so fun fact, I had a matten filter in here previously and it laying flat and I let the moss cover the whole thing and then I killed all the moss. So I'm basically trying it again. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, so it'll be a while before we get to this tank, but I do want to get CO2 hooked up to these ones probably in the next in the next week. So again, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. I would appreciate it. Thumbs up. Leave a comment. This I love this tank. I absolutely love this tank. It's going to go crazy with CO2 and, and it's just it's going to go crazy. Super excited. So uh, definitely, like I said, blah, blah, blah. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you all in the next one.